I lurk in the corners alone. Nobody understands me. I'm troubled and complicated, and I wail tears of blood. Woe is me! Uh, sir, this is all Wendy's. Edgelords are the best kinds of players. I just love having to read 15 pages of cookie-cutter backstory copied and pasted from an anime or a TV show. So hey, grab your dead parents, insomnia, and brooding, and let's get right into these tales of edgy woes. Roll post. So, this story is about a guy that we will call Edgy King, because his username was in that vein and I will never know his real name. I've been playing D&D for years and years and started to pick up DMing. Of course, that meant everyone started flocking around me asking to join a game. Everyone I DM'd for were friends, friends of friends, or family. My brother wanted me to DM for him and his friends, two boys I've known since they were in kindergarten who were basically also little brothers to me. They bring along an online friend who is great, and he asks if he can also invite a friend that had been looking for a group, who is Edgy King. I say sure, since, you know, we're all adults. Mistakes were made. Edgy King immediately throws up the red flags when joining the Discord by saying that people always kick him out because they're too uptight and he has anxiety. I say, no, that's totally cool. I also have diagnosed anxiety disorder. Everything will be fine. He continues the pity party anyways and calls people out for typing in chat, but not actually sending any messages, saying we're all just gonna turn on him again. Generally just being really weird and antisocial while also being aggressive towards people he has just met. Here we go. While problem people come in many forms, near all of them have one thing in common that being an impossibly huge victim complex. Which, ironically enough, perfectly connects with the entire Edgelord MO. The world has wronged me, so I'm gonna be an annoying little shit about it. I'm a victim, therefore whatever I do is justified because I'm always punching up, is a theme I guarantee we will be seeing very soon. Roll post. But whatever, we hadn't even played with him yet. I mark down a strike in my head and try and warn him to cool it. I asked him what his real name was in private DM since everyone in the group he has joined knew each other IRL, and it's just a bit weird to call one person by their username and everyone else by their real names, but he's not comfortable giving it out. I didn't actually care that much and I understood that he was uncomfortable but the way he worded it seemed like he was trying to throw up a wall between himself and the rest of the party, which struck me as odd since these are people you are supposed to be enjoying yourself with. Again, I gave him the benefit of the doubt, thinking we just needed to warm him up, and I like to try and help people like him who are lonely and need people in their life to just make an effort to reach them. We play a session. The session goes fine with nothing of note happening, other than the fact that Edgy King is being fairly antisocial. It's Edgy King, the mutual friend, my brother and his two best friends and my little sister, who is the youngest, at 16. Another thing about my sister is that she is on the national junior team for her chosen sport, and has some rules about what she can and cannot post to social media. Why is this relevant? Well, the day after the session, Edgy King reveals that he has recorded the whole thing and posted it to YouTube, without any prior knowledge or consent. I have to ask him to make it private and to please not post these things in the future without everyone's explicit consent. He, at first, gets very defensive saying that he's only doing it so he can rewatch them later, but I point out then that he should be fine with privating and not posting. He argues for a while longer, getting pretty aggressive with people before he turns around and makes it into a pity party again, apologizing at least. Very, woe is me, I didn't know you didn't want to be recorded without your consent and posted onto social media. Whatever, that was strike two. Why is it always the worst possible people that think they would be the best podcasters ever? This is a question I can only answer one way. Terminal Dunning-Kruger effect. 
the classic phenomenon where the underqualified overestimate their abilities. In this case, the least tolerable person imaginable thinks he should start a YouTube channel where he can broadcast his amazing personality and mysterious edginess. So prepare yourself, my friends. It's the true successor to Critical Role, a weird edgelord recording his table without their consent. Can we get 10k likes? We're about to hit strike three. So strap in, crab gang. It's about to get wild. Strike three happened before the next session could start, and it really got me upset. Edgy King messaged me out of the blue that I should kick out one of my brother's best friends, Glasses, because that's what I called him when he was in first grade and got his first pair of glasses. He tells me that Glasses cheated in a different D&D group that they were in, and the details he is providing are hazy at best. I tell him I don't really care what happened at another table because one, I can't know the full situation, and two, because Glasses is basically a little brother to me and I'm not going to take the word of someone I barely know and just kick him out of the game. If he cheats at my table, he will get his ass whooped, trust me, but I'm not going to kick him out for supposedly cheating at another table. Edgy King is absolutely livid about this. He tries to tell me how this is a grievous offense and that this man should be banned from D&D forever. On the side, I'm messaging Glasses and others getting their appraisal of the situation, and Glasses admits to me the whole time he was just goading Edgy King. He said he had made a mistake and misunderstood his ability, making it much more powerful, and was about to correct himself when Edgy King lost his shit. So he decided to dig his heels in for the laugh. I told him he's a shit disturber and an asshole and he can't do that at my table, and he assured me he wouldn't. Not defending his behavior, as apparently this had devolved into a huge argument, but I was not about to take Edgy King's insistence that I kick out glasses. Other people present also seemed to side with glasses, since he did at one point admit to it being a mistake, but Edgy King still harassed him. It seemed like a messy, hours-long argument that I was not going to make a judgment on. I tried to tell Edgy King that I would keep an eye on Glasses and his sheet, I assured him that I know 5e like the back of my hand, and since he can't fudge rolls made online, he won't be cheating in my game. But he was not having it. He wanted Glasses out of the game. I told him in no uncertain terms that I would not be kicking out Glasses, since he was like a little brother to me and hadn't done anything wrong at my table. I can't control what happens at others, but I would be keeping an eye on him. This was still unacceptable, even after being reminded of my relationship with Glasses and how close we were, he continued to be vitriolic and even call him names, which is where I drew the line. Strike three, you're out. I told him in a nice way to fuck off, and I banned him from everything. I probably should have booted him earlier, but I wanted to give him a chance. The campaign fell apart a few weeks after anyways because of people's schedules, but I'm glad I got the satisfaction of banning him. I doubt my telling got across just how weirdly aggressive and rude he was, but it was years and years ago, and I try and vet my players better now. This one's gonna be fun, friends. Edgelord explodes into rage when OP mocks his edgy tune. Roll post. I was playing a D&D &D campaign with my friends, but there was a new guy who came in because he was one of my friend's brothers and he wanted to try and play D&D. &D. I'm gonna call him Jay. When Jay came to play, he was wearing only black clothes. And when I tried to say hi, Jay just looked at me and said nothing. But I didn't care. His character was an edgy archer who had lost his parents, tribe, wife, and children to the king and sold his soul to get revenge on the king for taking everything from him. And after killing the king, he would kill himself. Alright, who else wants to bet that he's like level 3 or below? 
You gotta love these dudes who write compendiums of lore dumps all about how badass their character is, only for them to actually sit down and play and be much more like a level 2 stable boy, struggling to throw a husk of corn at a hostile rat, all while taking himself painfully seriously. That and every single edgy kid's backstory is the same. A huge flaw is that the writer thinks of what he wants his character to look like, or what his vibe is, and then they work backwards from there. Hmm, my character's gonna be cool and like, brooding and alone. So I should probably just cram a few tragedies in there and call it a day. In my humble opinion, it's the characters that have gone through hell but still didn't let their heart freeze over that are a million times more interesting. Just my opinion, anyways, roll post. I said to my friend very quietly, this is the edgiest character I have ever seen in D&D. Somehow, Jay heard me, and he didn't like that. So he started to cheat, and he would always miss and accidentally hit the party. He also fought every single NPC in the game, even the friendly ones. After an hour of this, we all wanted him to be kicked out. Even his brother did. But then Jay said, You don't want me to play because you can't understand a well-written character because you're all idiots. Hmm, is my character poorly written and annoying to everyone else? No, it, no it's, it's the everyone else that's wrong. The entire time I just have a mental image of a 14 year old LARPing the hatred guy and tearfully raging at the table because nobody thinks he's as badass as he does. The best part is I've known people like this well enough to know that I am not far off in the slightest. Everybody knows one of the carbon copies of this kid. Anyways, let's finish this real post. I said, you are intentionally trying to make everyone's game worse. That's why we are kicking you out. Then Jay said, Shut up, you just don't understand a good character. You said my character was edgy when he wasn't. After that, I said, Wait, did you just try to ruin the campaign because I said your character was edgy? He just looked at me and I could clearly see that he was very, very angry, and then he left. And I never saw him again. After that, the campaign shortly ended. Honestly, 10 out of 10 edgelord cringe. Anyways, next story. I was playing on this West March style Discord server in a text-based one-shot. A group I was in, that included two other players, were heading into the Underdark. We hadn't been given much of a briefing on what we were doing, so it was kind of assumed that we were just exploring unexplored areas. At the beginning of the game, as the PCs were chatting with each other, we already knew each other and were expressing excitement about our adventure. There was also a DMPC standing at our meeting point. He was not a part of our adventuring guild, and he was wearing a hood that covered his face. My character, being a rather cheerful rogue, greeted him and tried to pull him into the conversation, but the guy would say very little, barely acknowledging our existence, let alone identify himself or say why he was there. Finally, once we decided it was time to get this show on the road, we decided to head down into the Underdark. When we did, the DM cut in. Y you're all just gonna leave your guide behind? It's pretty risky going into the Underdark without a guide. To which all of us were confused. The hooded guy who would not talk to us? This led to a bit of a long-winded argument that I don't want to go over all the details of because I don't really understand what the DM was expecting from us. But eventually, we were following this guy. But my character was pretty suspicious, so he began to question him. He wasn't sure why they needed a guide, and wasn't sure what he was guiding them to. It all felt like a trap, so I began pressing him for answers. This led the DM to asking why I was being so rude to the DMPC. Uh, because he's super suspicious, we have no idea who he is, we haven't seen his face even, and we don't know where he's leading us to. This feels like an obvious trap. 
and my character is not going to keep following him until he gets answers. So my character continued to grill him and refuses to follow any further until he gets answers, to which I'm told to do a wisdom save. I fail and my character is silenced, so I had to do those dreaded words. I had to do what my character would do in this situation, which was flip him the bird and leave. I said my character turns around and heads towards the exit. He wasn't going to willfully walk into a trap, and frankly had enough of the DM's bullshit, so I was ready to leave the game anyway. No reward was worth this BS. This is the best way to handle an unwinnable situation. Just walk away. If it makes no sense on or off the table, there is no reason to humor it. Um, but guys, you're supposed to be totally enthralled by my super cool original character. Why is nobody clapping, guys? He's super mysterious. I mean this in the nicest way possible to all the DMs out there. None of your players will care about your NPCs the same way they care about their characters. Trying to wedge a DM-controlled character as the leader of the party is dumb and undermines a large part of why people play these games. That being the freedom to try problem solving in unique and creative ways. Saying, no, you can't do that, instead worship my character and do as he says, just takes the wind out of D&D sales and makes the players an audience to your fanfiction. Anyways, let's see how the DM reacts. To which the DM said that my character trips and falls into a hole. No save. I'm pretty dumbfounded by this because I'm pretty sure insta-killing like that is against the rules. But he says I'm not dead. Soon after, the DM PC pulls his mask down and reveals he's some shadow monster no surprise there, and teleports the rest of the party into what I assume was the Shadowfell. This is the worst way to handle an easily winnable situation. The DM is so mad that people don't blindly follow his epic shadow NPC that he's scrapping the whole campaign in a rage. Honestly though, OP could wear this as a badge of honor. DM Rage Quitter has a bit of a ring to it. That being said, let's finish this story. My character ends up there as well too, but at this point I'm pretty pissed off about the whole situation, and I argue with the DM a bit more before just backing out of the game entirely. I know I was probably pretty aggressively argumentative during the whole thing. I had my reasons, which I mentioned. In another game on the server, my character had been in a very similar situation following an NPC who refused to answer questions into an obvious trap, and nearly died because of it. And when that happened, I complained about how there really was no viable option in that game, but follow the guy. The DM in that game, who ran the server, said that I could always have turned and left, and was insulted for falling for the obvious trap. So when it happened again, I tried to do the same, and was annoyed when I was teleported into the trap anyway. After this incident, I actually just straight up left the server, deciding I didn't really like the DMs who ran the games. Sorry to rush this video into a close, but I'm at Gen Con right now. I'll be right back, but until then, here are some more videos in these funny boxes as usual. Till next time.